I believe that a bog filter is the best water filter that the average person can use to filter their pond. It's cheap, easy to construct, easy to maintain, and provides clean, clear, healthy water. In this video, I'm going to show you a few different designs and how they all achieve a similar outcome. Hopefully these designs will give you the confidence to design and build your own bog filter. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev, and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and be sure to visit my website, ozponds.com. So a bog filter works by having water move through some sort of media, usually rock and pebble. The rock and pebble create a home for bacteria and beneficial organisms. The bacteria and organisms will process waste and nutrient created by the fish, thus keeping the water clean, clear and healthy. Over time, the bog filter will also accumulate solid waste, so it's preferable to have an easy way to clean and flush the system. Plants can also be planted into the filter to help remove additional nutrients and help trap fine sediments. That's the basic gist. Of course, there's some quite complex biological processes going on inside the filter, but I just want to keep it simple. So let's take a look at some designs so you can see how it all works. This first one is what I call a mini bog. This one came about from when I was doing aquaponics. Aquaponics is a cool method of growing veggies using the waste that the fish produce. You have a fish tank or a pond and water is pumped from there up into a grow bed. The grow bed is our bog filter. It has a media for bacteria and plants and the water moves through the grow bed and returns to the pond. My aquaponics system was a failure I couldn't grow decent veggies. There are always nutrient deficiencies, so I went back to just growing veggies in raised garden beds. But the aquaponic system showed me that even with lots of fish, the water was still clean, clear and healthy. So I still have the old aquaponic system, but now it's just ornamental. And I have a wine barrel pond that has a mini bog or grow bed sitting on top, again just with ornamental plants. So here's a diagram of the filter. Water is pumped from the pond up into the filter. There's a standpipe in the middle of the filter which sets the level of the water. There's a larger diameter pipe that has multiple holes drilled in it. The pipe is a gravel guard. It stops the media from smothering the standpipe, but it still lets the water through. The standpipe can be removed to completely empty the filter. To prevent this water from fouling the pond during cleaning, a hose can be added to divert the dirty water out onto the garden. The bog filter itself is a food safe plastic container with some timber cladding to make it look a bit nicer. To create a watertight seal in the container, you need to use a bulkhead fitting. This filter is super easy to make. Because a small pond like this will only have small fish, you only need the filter to be about 10% of the pond's volume. When sizing a pump for a bog filter, I like to size it at six times the volume of the filter. If you can't be bothered doing the math, I created a free calculator at ozponds.com and I'll put a link in the description. Next is what I call the bog filter in a barrel, but it could really be any type of container. This is good for larger ponds. In this design, water is pumped from the pond into the base of the container. There's a breather pipe to prevent the filter from siphoning if the pump shuts off. In this design, we're using larger rock in the base of the filter or creating some type of void area to help solid waste accumulate. The water percolates up through various grades of rock and pebble and then it overflows into a stream or a waterfall and back to the pond. In this design, I add a flush valve at the base of the container. This design works great if you're excavating a decent sized pond and you'll have plenty of earth to build up a berm around the container or barrel to hide it. This conceals it and gives you a nice slope to create a stream or waterfall on. You can then easily daylight the clean out valve so it's very easy to back flush the filter. There's lots of containers that can be used. I've seen people use tanks, IBCs, bathtubs, anything that already has a clean-out valve or that you can easily add one to is great. 
For sizing the filter, it depends on the type of pond. What I mean is what you're keeping inside the pond. That free calculator I mentioned has some guidelines for different types of fish and animals. To create watertight seals in the container, you can either use bulkhead fittings, like in the previous design, or uniseals. Uniseals are good if the container has curved edges. Another important part is that the overflow pipe needs to be larger than the inflow. The inflow is under pressure from the pump and the overflow is just being carried back to the pond by gravity. The next design is for larger ponds or where the filter needs to keep a lower profile. Say you can't get a berm around the filter that'll look natural. This filter I call the poor man's aquascape wetland. I'm using the same method as the aquascape wetland filter but it won't cost you thousands of dollars in components. Again, same principles apply. We just want to bring the water into the base of the filter, create a zone for solid waste to accumulate, and have an easy method to clean out the filter. So all you really need is some pipe that will disperse water into the base of the filter. I use these trench liners in my larger bog filters that use this design. But if you can't find them, you could use some larger diameter pipe and drill multiple holes to evenly disperse the water. Or you could just buy the centipede module. To help the solid material settle out, there's a matrix block over the top of the dispersal pipe. On my dream pond, I decided to try it without the blocks, and the filter works great, but I only have small native fish inside the pond. If I were keeping larger fish, I'd go with the blocks. And there's cheaper alternatives to the blocks. I made a video on that a while back, so I'll link that in the description. To clean out the filter, you need to have a vertical pipe or a port that the dispersal pipe is connected to. On my dream pond, I used olive barrels and I cut out a section to allow the trench liner to slot into it. This means I can place a dirty water pump into the barrel and completely drain the filter. On another pond, I've just used some PVC pipe because I have a pond vac that can fit down the pipe and I can completely drain the filter that way. On the aquascape filters, they use a snorkel vault. For the media, again, it's varying sizes of rock and pebble. The differing sizes make it easier to clean. If you want to supersize the amount of surface area available for bacteria, you might consider adding something like bioballs into the matrix blocks. Again, it just depends on what you're keeping inside the pond and how much filtration you actually need. I've got no issues with oversizing a filter. It's much better than undersizing it. So this type of filter has been used on some really large projects. The larger the filter, the more you'll need to consider how you're going to clean it. That'll mean multiple clean-out ports or adding segments to the filter. So each part of the filter drains to a certain clean-out port. For sizing this type of filter, I still like to use the pond's volume, but aquascape contractors will size their wetlands based on the surface area of the pond. So that's the three designs for bog filters that I've used on my ponds. Another popular design is the Nelson's Activated Bog Filter. Same thing, moving water through pebble. But in their design, they're adamant that the pebble should only be 12 inches deep, and it must be pea gravel. I'll put links to both Aquascape and Nelson's designs in the description. Another system I like the look of is the David Pagan Butler system of moving water through a regeneration zone using air pumps. He's using this system to filter water for swimming ponds that he calls natural organic pools. I'll put a link to his channel in the description if you want to check it out. There's a few things I worry about, like how the system is going to be flushed, Maybe it doesn't need to be, but I've never seen it addressed why that's the case. I'm also not a fan of downflow systems. I'm just biased in that regard. I made a video on upflow versus downflow, if you want to hear me ramble on about why I think that way. So I'll link it below for you. I often incorporate an intake bay in my pond designs, which does act like a downflow bog but I'm using it primarily for capturing materials off the pond's surface and as a pre-filter to the pumps. That's not to say that it doesn't also provide biological filtration, as all that pebble is still going to provide home for the good bacteria and organisms. 
If you want to learn more about intake bays and DIY skimming systems, I'll link those as well. So there's lots of various ways that a pond filter can be constructed and designed, but the fundamentals are always the same. It should move water through media that provides habitat for good bacteria and organisms, capture sediment, and be easy to clean. If you move enough water through enough media, it's really pretty simple. Again, that free calculator on ozponds.com can help you size your bog filter and pump. Anyway, I hope this video was somewhat helpful. If you thought so, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.